Welcome to video series on structural analysis of indeterminate structures. In this video, you will learn about basics of matrix methods in structural analysis. I have prepared this video specially for the slow learners who do not have any knowledge of matrix method. So watch complete video if you want to understand concepts of stiffness matrix method and flexibility matrix method. Okay. Now we will start with very simple example of simultaneous equations. And now we will see how we can convert these equations in matrix form. Now suppose you have one equation 10x plus 15y is equal to 200. Here x and y are variables. We have second equation 25x plus 30y is equal to 4 to 5. So let us see how we can write these equations in matrix form. So we can write these constants in this matrix and then these variables here and right hand side like this. And we read it like this 10x plus 15y is equal to 200. 25x plus 30y is equal to 4 to 5. So this is how we can read the matrix. So if you have this matrix equation, then you can also convert this to, into simultaneous equation like this. We can read like this 10x plus 15y is equal to 200 and 25x plus 30y is equal to 4 to 5 and we can solve it. Now let us have another example. Now there is one more term suppose on left hand side. Now we have equation 10x plus 15y plus 200 is equal to 400. And second equation is 25x plus 30y minus 150 is equal to 275. Now how we can write these equations in matrix form? So here these are variables x and y. The, 10 into x, this is multiplication, 15 into y. So this, we multiply these two matrices. Okay. So we can write, we can read like this 10x plus 15y plus first row element that is 200 is equal to 400. Similarly, we can read 25x plus 30y plus minus 150 is equal to 275. So this is how we read the simultaneous equation in matrix form. These are the general equations. Now we will see some structural analysis equation and we will see how we can convert these equations into, into matrix form. You must have studied slope deflection method. In slope deflection method, we use this equation for member AB, final moment MAB is equal to 4ei by l theta a plus 2ei by l theta b plus mf a b. Now here theta a and theta b are unknown and these are the variables. Similarly, m b a is equal to 2ei by l theta a plus 4ei by l theta b plus mf b a. Now in same way, we can write these equations in matrix form. So we can write like this m a b is equal to 4ei by l theta a plus 2ei by l theta b plus mfab. Similarly, mba is equal to 2ei by l theta a plus 4ei by l theta b plus mfba. So this is how we can convert our structural analysis equations in matrix form. Now in this case, this left hand side matrix is called as member end forces. Forces also include moments. So these moments are member end forces. Then this second matrix, this is called as element stiffness matrix in which we are interested in. Then third is called as element unknown displacements. So these are the unknown displacement which we want to calculate. Once you get these unknown displacement, then we can write this matrix in simultaneous form and we can calculate theta a, theta b, etc. and then final moment. For that we have to apply the equilibrium conditions also that we will see in next video. 
so this matrix is called as element unknown displacements and this last matrix is called as element fixed end moments so far you might have studied many methods of structural analysis like slope deflection method kanis method moment distribution method three moment theorem castig lanos theorem etc now all these methods can be distributed into force methods and displacement method now you may think that why i should learn this matrix method so let us see what is the necessity of learning this matrix method so we know that we have analyzed many structures that is continuous beam portal frames etc using various methods now these different methods of structural analysis such as consistent deformation method energy theorems slope deflection method moment distribution method kanis method etc these have been developed to analyze indeterminate structures such as continuous beam or fixed beam or portal frames stresses etc but these matter methods are suitable for small size structures only that is for hand calculations now for large complex structural system which involve large number of unknowns it is convenient to analyze such structure using computer program now when the structure is large the degree of kinematic indeterminacy as well as degree of static indeterminacy is very large and we cannot handle such type of structure manually so for that we have to develop some computer program and we know that the matrix can be handled very conveniently uh, in computer program whether it may be a fortran program or c program we can write a program for matrix operation addition of matrix multiplication of matrix etc so matrix method of structural analysis are convenient to develop a computer program since it is easy to handle matrix operations on computer do it is tedious to solve small size problems using these methods it is essential to understand the underlying principle of de to develop a computer program so we are studying this matrix method because we want to learn how to develop a computer program and therefore we need to understand stiffness matrix method and flexibility matrix method normally the softwares available in the market these are based on finite element method so finite element method is also extension of stiffness matrix method and therefore it is necessary to understand these methods you know that there are two types of methods in structural analysis for example slope deflection method kanis method or moment distribution method these are displacement methods and three moment theorem that is clapeyron's theorem or castiglianos theorem or all energy theorems these are force method so similarly in matrix methods also there are two types so based on the quantities which are chosen as primary unknowns the matrix methods of structural analysis are as follows so there are two types based on whether forces are unknown or whether displacements are unknown so if primary unknowns are forces that method is called as flexibility matrix method and if primary unknowns are displacement that is theta and delta then it is called as stiffness matrix method now we will understand what is the difference between flexibility matrix method and stiffness matrix method now let us compare both this method flexibility matrix method and stiffness matrix method so as i told you that flexibility matrix method is a force method because forces are primary unknowns and stiffness matrix method is a displacement method so flexibility matrix method is also called as compatibility method and stiffness method method is equilibrium method then this method flexibility matrix method is derived from consistent deformation method whereas stiffness matrix method is derived from slope deflection method just now we have seen how we can convert that slope deflection equations into matrix form 
So this method, stiffness matrix method, is developed from slope deflection method. Similarly, this method, flexibility matrix method, is developed for, from consistent deformation method. Then, since it is a force method, the primary unknowns are redundant forces. And since stiffness matrix is a displacement method, primary unknowns are joint displacements. Now, what does it mean? It means that, for example, if you want to analyze this structure using flexibility matrix method, so here this is indeterminate structure, and we know that degree of ind static indeterminacy is 2. Because if you remove these two supports here, it will become a determinate structure as a cantilever beam. So redundant means extra. So these are the extra supports which are not required for stability. So to convert this structure into determinate one, we have to remove two forces, means two reactions. And therefore, in case of flexibility method, if you want to analyze this as a in by flexibility method here unknowns will be rb and rc but if you want to analyze same beam using stiffness matrix method in that case displacements are unknown so you know that degree of kinematic indeterminacy so in this case it is rotation at joint b and rotation at joint c so when we will solve this problem by stiffness matrix method then unknown quantities will be theta b and theta c. Whereas when we analyze same problem by flexibility method, the unknowns will be rb and rc. So here redundant are forces, uh, these are redundant forces which are primary unknowns in flexibility method and displacement means theta b and theta c, these are the primary unknowns in stiffness method. Primary unknown means we calculate first these quantities and after that we will get final moment in the beam. Then next difference is in flexibility method, geometrical compatibility equations are used to calculate the unknown forces. Means to calculate RB and RC, we have to use geometrical compatibility equations. Whereas in stiffness matrix method, we have to use joint equilibrium equations just similar to slope deflection equation in stiffness matrix method we use joint equilibrium equation now what is this geometrical compatibility equation and joint equilibrium equation for example if you want to write compatibility equation at joint b then we can write here we can observe here there is a support and at support there is the displacement is zero so it it cannot have displacement or deflection at B. So delta B is equal to zero is the compatibility equation for this case. Or delta C is equal to zero is the compatibility equation. Or theta A equal to zero because this is a fixed support. And we know that theta at fixed support is zero. So theta A is equal to zero is compatibility equation. Similarly, delta A is equal to zero is also a compatibility equation. So compatibility equation is written in terms of thetas and deltas. So here at joint P, for example, if you want to write compatibility equation, then we can write deflection at B, that is delta B is equal to zero. That equation is called as compatibility equation. Now for same case, if you want to write equilibrium equation, so at joint B, we can write equilibrium equation we know that summation of moment at joint B is equal to zero. So we can write MBA plus MBC is equal to zero or MCB is equal to zero. These are the equilibrium conditions. So this is basic difference between compatibility equations and equilibrium equations. Now next difference is degree of indeterminacy. Since flexibility method is a force method static degree of indeterminacy is important whereas in stiffness method since it is a displacement method we have to calculate kinematic degree of indeterminacy then here in this case in flexibility method there is no unique choice of unknown redundant forces for particular structure 
but in case of stiffness method the unknown joint displacements are uniquely defined for a particular structure therefore this method is not suitable for to develop computer program whereas this is most popular to develop the computer program now i will uh, tell you what is the meaning of this sentence there is no unique choice of unknown i told you that to start with in flexibility method you have to see what are the redundant forces this is a force method so redundant forces how many redundant forces are there redundant means extra which is not required for stability if you remove uh, support at b and c this beam can become a cantilever beam which is a stable structure or you can remove support b here and here you can make this you can remove the moment carrying capacity means make this simple support then this beam can become a simply supported beam in that case the redundant will be here rb and here theta a so if you consider theta a and rb as redundant this can be converted into simply supported beam or if you can consider the theta a and uh, at this location moment so you can consider moment and force at a equal to 0 that is reaction so if you consider reaction at a is equal to 0 this is a simply supported beam with overhang so we have choice to decide what force to be taken as redundant force so computer for computer programming this is not a good thing so therefore if you analyze this by stiffness matrix method then there, there is unique definition of unknown displacement that is theta b and theta c and therefore this method is not convenient to develop computer program whereas this method is systematic and suitable to develop the computer program and therefore stiffness matrix method is more popular than flexibility matrix method so why this method is more popular stiffness matrix method and why flexibility is not popular because here there is no unique choice as i told you just now that here there are four unknown reactions and you can take any two reactions as redundant so there is no unique choice to uh, take the redundant forces while analyzing the beam you can take reactions at a that is ma and ra as redundant it will become cantilever beam uh, simply supported beam with overhang then you can consider reaction at b and c as redundant it will become a cantilever beam as a determinate one and you can also consider this rb and ma as redundant it will become a simply supported beam so there is no unique choice of uh, taking the redundant forces and therefore this method is not popular and here if you want to analyze by stiffness method so unknown sir unique that is theta b and theta c and therefore it is easy to develop a program using stiffness matrix method so in flexibility matrix method and in stiffness matrix method we have to develop in flexibility matrix method we have to develop flexibility matrix in stiffness matrix method we have to develop stiffness matrix and the component of this matrix says is called as flexibility coefficient and stiffness coefficient respectively so let us see what is the meaning of flexibility coefficient and what is the meaning of stiffness coefficient so we will take a simple example to understand stiffness coefficient and flexibility coefficient let us consider a cantilever beam which is subjected to a point load p because of this point load p there is deflection d in this cantilever beam now first we will see what is the meaning of flexibility coefficient so we know that this deflection d due to this point load there is a standard formula plq upon 3ei 
now what is flexibility coefficient flexibility coefficient is displacement developed due to unit force when this p is equal to 1 what is the deflection that quantity is called as flexibility coefficient so in this formula suppose you write here p equal to 1 then this displacement becomes l cube upon 3i so this itself is called as flexibility coefficient so here if you substitute p is equal to 0 you will get flexibility coefficient sorry if you substitute p, p is equal to 1 you will get flexibility coefficient is equal to l cube upon 3 ei in short you can say deflection upon force is the flexibility coefficient if you take d upon p it is l cube upon 3 ei so it is a flexibility coefficient so what is flexibility coefficient it is displacement developed due to unit force when this p is equal to 1 what is the deflection in that direction it is l cube upon 3i so this factor is called as flexibility coefficient now we will see what is mean by stiffness coefficient now we can write this formula like this also p is equal to we can take this on this side 3 ei upon l cube into d now what is stiffness coefficient stiffness coefficient s is used to express force developed due to unit displacement if this displacement is unit means if d equal to 1 what is the force force is 3 ei upon l cube so we get stiffness coefficient is equal to 3 ei upon l cube here we have substituted d equal to 1 so stiffness coefficient is force developed due to unit displacement whereas flexibility coefficient is displacement developed due to unit force so you must understand this difference to understand these methods flexibility method matrix method and stiffness matrix method when we solve any problem using flexibility matrix method or stiffness matrix method the first step is to define the coordinate system so based on that we have to write these coefficients so now we will note few things about this flexibility coefficient and stiffness coefficients so please note these points if the flexibility and stiffness matrices have common coordinate system then the product of stiffness matrix and flexibility matrix is a unit matrix for this condition the flexibility and stiffness matrices are reciprocal of each other or inverse of each other but normally the coordinate system are different in flexibility method and stiffness method and therefore flexibility matrix f is not the inverse of stiffness matrix so this is all about the basic information of matrix methods in next video we will understand the concept of stiffness matrix method so stay connected thank you for watching this video